It's mid-March, it's a blustery day here in the desert, and I have collected a new batch of things. Uh, the, the kind people who are supporting my page, and you know who you are, have sent me all these lovely gifts uh, that I'm going to open now. And I am so excited and I'm so appreciative of everything that you sent. A lot of you guys have uh, previously sent some stuff. I see a couple of things from people I know, Lance and uh, Ann Meyer and Patrick. Uh, uh, but I'm just excited to get moving on this. A couple of these are eBay purchases. This I know about, but I think that you'll enjoy those too. So uh, I guess without further delay, uh, let's move on to opening stuff. This arrived several weeks ago, actually, and I've been, uh, I put it aside, and now is the time where I finally get to open it, and it's very curious. It came in a, in a brown box, and I knew there was going to be gift wrapping because it said a gift, so this says, enjoy your gift. I hope you love this book as my as much as I did. I know you love The Carpenters from Cindy Green. Cindy Green? Cindy Green. Look at this lovely gift wrap. And, uh, oh, hang on. That's tin snips. <laughs> they are tin snips. <laughs> oh, looks like I'm going to need more. All right. Really? <laughs> I need, oh, of course, there, there, I could have saved something nice. Okay, well, there you are. Oh, look at that. Wow, what a pretty book. The Musical Legacy of the Carpenters. Wow, look at that. How pretty is that? This is beautiful. Oof, Karen doing her, uh, what do you call that? Posture. Posture. What do you call those lessons when they do that? De not debutante. There's something about that. Finishing school kind of lessons. Oh, look at that. Pretty cool. Oh, it's like all their albums being uh, mentioned. There's Karen in front of the dinner table, in front of her. Oh, I wonder if it's that awful one where they did. Make, a, make her sing. Make her sing. Cool. Hey, this is neat. Thank you, Cindy. Very, very cool. Oh, how they charge! How they charted? There's in front of uh, Downey, Newville Street, Karen's Death House. Merch. This is very cool. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you very, very much. This is very cool. I um, I love it. Do you love it, Troy? I love it. Do you love it's it? It's a nice book. It's a really nice book. Fancy. <clears throat> We just saw Herb Alpert uh, in concert like two nights ago, and he signed them in uh, 69 it was. He signed them, I think, to uh, to A&M Records, and he talked about them at, at, our, at the concert. So thank you, Cindy Gray. Thank you so much, and thank you for your patience. Uh, it's very nice of you to send a lovely gift in a lovely gift wrapping that I destroyed. Now, this came from my friend Patrick. And I need uh, extra points if you can guess that pattern. But Patrick sent this a while back, so let's see what, he's, what he has to say. KHJ Boss Radio. Patrick says, um, here's Vintage Swank Brand Oil. Oh, wait, cufflinks. KHJ from the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And oh, cool, look at that. Oil Derrick. I know there's going to be a Jimmy connection. Vintage Swank brand oil well cufflinks, just like Jimmy had. Jimmy, as in James Dean. Jimmy's are on display at the Fairmont James Dean Museum in 1936. That, what was the Attleboro Manufacturing Company, became Swank Products Incorporated. They continued to offer men's jewelry under the Swank name, which began as men's jewelry brand, jewelry brand in the 1920s. Hey, these are cool. I'll have to find a picture of them at the James Dean Museum. I reached out to Dorothy, the curator at the James Dean Museum in Fairmount, and she clarified that Jimmy got these from Neiman Marcus in Dallas, Texas. 
I'm glad I remembered I had footage of them in the museum. And KHJ from the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. KHJ, Spawn's Ranch. Oh, there's Jimmy. I wonder if he's got his. Uh, KHJ. This is a 1969 promo guide. This was uh, Crystal Blue's Persuasion, Monsharia Moore. Baby, I love you, love me tonight. All these songs I played on the Helter Skelter tour. This is July of 1969, one month before you know what. And the number one song of the week of you know what was, do you remember, Troy? Mm, yeah. It was, the number one song of the week of the murders was In the Year 2525 by Zager and Evans. Very cool. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Very, very nice. Always thoughtful. Always Jimmy. Those are for envelopes only. Ooh. Oh, look. This says, Dear Scott and Troy, love your vlogs and themes. I am donating this unique matchbook and pencil. In 1974, I roomed at a New York college with a sister-in-law of Peter Max. Wow. Uh, he gave his art to this company owned by her sister, his wife. It's rare. I know from your vlogs, you on uh, Troy love his art. Please check out the Daily Mail's story. Uh, it's very sad. In fact, I do know that about Peter Max having dementia and who was sort of, yeah, it's a, it's a sad thing. I think his life and this Mickey Rooney type ending may be interesting for a vlog. I agree. Peter Max was um, such an awesome bit of, of Hollywood. Or not Hollywood. Remember, Peter Max used to have a comic strip. Like, in the Sunday Funnies, there was always a panel of Peter Max art. I mean, that was, that was a big... Dancing just go short works. Ooh, look. Is this, is this a matchbook? Wow. <laughs> a Peter Max matchbook. That's cool. Very cool. Wow. Diane Brandis, thank you so much. Enclosed is a famous disco called Bonds after a clothing shop. I met Tiny Tim there. He was very annoyed with the attention. Aw. Wow, look at these. The Generation Gap loves you. Look up, walk up, keep up with the fashions from the Generation Gap. That's really neat, New York, New York. Stores throughout San Francisco. Hey, these are neat. Tarantino's. I'm sensing a theme here. Romano's, Lombard Street, the crookedest street in the world. And I never felt straighter. The Hoff crowd. These are very, you know, when I was, I started organizing my uh, San Francisco wine collection, uh, not wine, San Francisco matches collection recently. So I'm going to, uh, and there's a couple of stories I want to do in San Francisco. Sardis, wow. This one's New York. There was a Sardis in LA. These are very cool. Thank you very much, Diane. You know, these have come to a good home. And uh, we're very excited about that. Jovenel Hovenella's. Thank you. Diane, you're very kind. This is crazy cool. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. That is very good. It's so, I've never seen a matchbook that big. Wow. Okay. Now this is an eBay thing. And I've got to say thank you to a few people who have sent me donations by PayPal because I can add to my collection that way. And I really appreciate it. This is Ann Meyer. You've been such a great sponsor. Amanda Beard, Martha Santos, 
and uh, Sharon McCarty. Uh, you guys have, have donated via PayPal to me, and I am able to get things that I want by eBay. And this is something that was very unusual. And I thought, well, it'll be a good addition because I collect these things anyway. But it'll be a good addition to the Dearly Departed collection. Because you've probably seen, I have a, I've opened a few of these types of things over the years. And this is a funeral giveaway for a Chicago personality. Harry, Harry Carey. Holy cow, the, the Chicago Cubs announcer. And, and of course, <laughs> my favorite, I think it's one of my favorite all-time skits on uh, Saturday Night Live when uh, Will Ferrell does Harry Carey. <laughs> hey, now, Ken, we all know that the moon is not made of green cheese. <laughs> yes, that's true, Harry. But, but what if it were made of barbecue spare ribs? Would you eat it then? <laughs> what? I know I would. Heck, I'd have seconds. <laughs> this is a uh, in loving memory of Harry Carey, uh, died 1998, interment All Saints Cemetery. But he was a he, my friend. My friend used to work at a restaurant that he would go in, and she said every time he would have he'd have cocktails. It wouldn't be wasted, but he'd get it from the table and he'd push up off the table, and he would uh, you know the table would rock. It was like really dangerous. He'd put his entire weight on the table, and it turns out that that's I think was the beginning of the end of him when he did that in a restaurant and he slammed in a table and fell over, and I think he never recovered from that. So um, that's an unusual Harry Carey item. And again, thank you, uh, you guys, for 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 sending stuff via PayPal because I can get cool stuff like that. If you were a hot dog and you were starving, would you eat yourself? I guess so. Oh, you made a wise choice, my friend. Did you figure it out yet? Oh, Notorious Bakersfield, the podcast. I know this gentleman. And I probably... Oh, look at that. A guide map of movie stars. Follow the red line on this map, which takes you to the home of one star to another. Legalized stalking. Back when things weren't sinister. When you could have a picnic on Lucy's lawn and no one was bothered. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. This is 1966, 1967. Some of the names on here. Bing Crosby, Doris Day, Lorraine Day, Walt Disney, Carol Wood, that, that checks out. Kirk Douglas, I saw him hit his car into his house one day. Judy, Ga Judy Garland, 680 Stone Canyon. That was, I think, where she lived when they made The Wizard of Oz. Spike Jones, Alan Ladd, Frankie Lane. Wow, these are great names. I'm going to read this, uh, this note from... Um, from Robert Peterson from Notorious Bakersfield. When you operated Dearly Departed Tours, you were always generous to uh, PFLAG every time I mentioned, uh, ask for an in-kind donation. PFLAG, parents and friends of lesbians and gays. Uh, thank you for your support and generosity. I recently came across this 1967 map to the movie Stars Homes. Hope you enjoy. And I will send you, indeed, Robert, a, 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 a Death Egg sticker. These are very cool. And say hey to, to uh, my buddy Warren when you see him. He's your buddy, too. Uh, Lon Chaney, Sid Charisse on a map of movie Stars Homes. I love it. Joseph Cotton, Roderick Crawford, Bob Crosby. Joey Bishop. I love that these guys were on Movie Stars Homes maps. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. I love this. Be very careful with it. Look at that. Published and compiled by Vivian Welton. Very neat. Very cool. Delicate and, and nice. So I'm slamming it around. This is from David Brenner <laughs> and his poo-poo platter. <laughs> this is actually uh, from my friend Lance, who always sends awesome stuff. 
and uh, and I'm anxious to see what Lance has sent our way this time. He is uh, <laughs> always very generous with his odd uh, gifts. It's from Bloomies. Lee wanted you to have these. Love, Scott Thornson. <laughs> Look at these. I love it. Oh, look at that, the Liberace. Oh, this is the auction. This is the auction catalog. Oh my God, I want Liberace's barbecue. Oh man, do I wish I'd have got in on this auction. But it's so neat to see the stuff from it. Look at that stuff. And it's so interesting that you sent it this week, Lance. Well, you sent me cool uh, Liberace stuff anyway, but I interviewed Steve Gary, who's a uh, Who's going, the interview is going to go up very soon. Troy's been working diligently on it, and it's a scandalous, fascinating. Look at that. That's the real one on Beverly Boulevard. That's the that's the one building that Liberace owned that actually ended up in that movie with Michael Douglas. But this is the one where Scott Thornton stayed put, and they ended up having to kick him out, throw all his stuff in garbage bags, and threw him out. That's that's cool. I want this piano. Look at that estimate, ten to 15000 Could you die? We could afford that. No, we can't. Not at all, but still. <laughs> it's something that would make us nowadays go, hmm, this is also that same building. Very, very cool, Lance. Thank you. This is neat. I've seen the ad for it, but I've never seen the catalog itself. So, um, and there's more. Oh, my God. Look at this. This is this has got to be an in concert program. As seen on PBS, look at these. These are what a what an awesome Gershwin Porter. Oh, there's, oh, the, house. there's the house too, the cloisters. And um, that's where we interviewed Steve walking around. Steve used to live in the cloisters with Lee. And uh, Lee, and I say Lee because I knew him. His friends called him Lee, and for some reason, I find it acceptable that I do, which is probably rude. But look at that. This is very neat. Lee and Carol Channing, because of course. And Mark Spitz and Cary Grant, and there's his mother and George. Jack Benny. And Keyboard Magic. Oh, this has got to be... This is, this is a Liberace fan club thing. <laughs> Look at this. Lance, you're killing me. Uh, the cloisters. And there's the cloisters again, yeah. There's the garage that we saw we sat in front of. That is I think that is those windows that we were talking about in that video that he made into a uh, a sitting room. Lee stud. Cherished photos, Lee and Pauline. Lee and Sylvia Osgood, Flory and Lee. This is neat. Thank you very much. As usual, keyboard magic. Look at this. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Oh, well, we're spending some time in this. Because I want to do a, a thing on Liberace's shop, too, on La Cienica Boulevard. Oh, thank you so much. This is, oh, you're fabulous. <laughs> this is nuts, nuts, nuts. It's like a kid in Christmas. Oh, look at that. Liberace matchbooks. I'm sensing, I'm sensing a theme here. We love the museum. When we went through, we thought of you when we saw these matchbooks. Also, we met you and Troy at Jordan's last Hollywood tour with you. We were the couple from Utah. And we think you're amazing. Love and best wishes, Tony and Susie Miller. Oh, look at that. Tony and Susie Miller. Oh. That's very nice. Liberace's museum, which is a travesty that that museum is gone, but it's still cool to be able to see some of Lee's things in, in the Liberace garage. Uh, thank you very much, Tony and Susie. All right, let's see. This works out pretty well as a letter opener, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, look at that. 
the matchbooks are spilling out. The Good Night Motel. I wish we smoked so we could use them. I know. When when they will have our ashtray room. <laughs> uh, some is a bit of a reason for it. Several weeks ago, several weeks, a couple of months ago, you were speaking about needing a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. I have one that's been in storage for a long time. I could donate it. They think it might meet your, might meet, meet your needs. Tape deck is four channels, suitable for quadraphonic and surround sound applications. Forward your shipping. That's really nice of you. Look at that. Um, we actually have a couple of these. The problem is they don't work right. And I've had one in repair for over six months. And... Uh, because the tracks sort of bleed over. This vintage uh, electronics repair guy I take him to, who has an R8 track tape player too, he uh, he's supposed to be working on it. So we'll see what happens there. But thank you for the offer. I appreciate it, Walter Norris, a.k.a. Adam. Adam in Kentucky. And these are cool. Let's see, Portocal Restaurant. I know that name. Compliments of Connie Hamilton. Iron Gate Restaurant, Richmond Street, Good Times Tavern. You know, it's funny is that there used to be a bar in the in the Liberace strip, strip mall, whereas Liberace's museum was called Good Times. And someone made the crack one time how Liberace liked Good Times in his entrance. Happy Holidays, Howard Johnson North, Lexington, Kentucky. Cracker Barrel. Bay Springs Marina. This is cool. Thank you very much. Hojo's. Parkway Liquors. That's very kind of you. Thank you. I uh, I really appreciate your offer of that machine. And that can't, that would not be cheap to ship either. Those things weigh, God, 100 pounds. So thank you for the offer. That's very kind of you. All right. This is an eBay thing. I know it is because I recognize the uh, where it came from. And... I'll, let's see, I'll show you what it is. Well, it's not really made for cardboard, is it? <laughs> Remember when those things used to be, they were shaped like a, like a, what were they shaped, like a bird or something in grade school? There were scissors like that. This is a baseball cap from a bar I used to hang out in Florida. And Jordan and I were in Florida. I found the bar again. It's no longer this bar, but look at that. Back, boy, that seemed better days, all stained. Backstreet, Fort Lauderdale. This was uh, a bar I used to hang out with when I lived in Florida back in the 80s. 80, 86, I think it was, that I was there. And Jordan and I were there not that long ago. This is where I saw some great bands, some great interesting musical performers, including the Weather Girls and Sylvester. And and I, w I have a video that I'm going to do about Backstreet and some of the musical acts that I've done that I saw there. So Backstreet, Fort Lauderdale. They had a mechanical bull there. That was pretty cool. Fort Lottie Da. Okay, Where's, here's the note. Scott and Troy. Michelle, quick flip. Thank you for the YouTube channel and the website. I'm the person that commented I had the original Burt Reynolds photo spread. I'm sorry, but I cannot find it. Stacy, AKA Michaela, quick flip. When Liz was married to John Warner, they visited the very small fire station in my town. Ha ha, no wonder she was drinking. Oh, look at that. <laughs> very cool. Look at that. Personal photos of Liz. La Liz. With the campaign hat. This would be something. Troy will love getting, getting a hold of these and monkeying around with the color. See what he can do. But Liz, we love Liz. Lance Burton, master magician. You don't hear about Lance Burton anymore, do you? Let's just say. Man's note, Wayne Newton. 8 p.m. dinner, carrying beer and shrimp, scampi, 1368. 
shift. How funny. And Johnny Carson. So long, Johnny, a scrapbook. Yeah, my friend Steve Cox wrote a book called Here's Johnny. And I know that he, he wrote a few articles when Johnny Carson uh, retired for the different different magazines. Very cool, thank you. This is neat. Autographs. To M Mary Best, George Montgomery. Don Ho, oh my God. Tiny bubbles. Look at that. Polynesian extravaganza. God, <laughs> this is cool <laughs> stuff. Rita Rudner at the Cabaret Theater, MGM Grand. My father was stationed in Naples. Here's one of the royals visiting. Oh, that look, could be uh, Margaret. She wasn't, uh, she was the, the most fun of them all. I think that might be Princess Margaret. James Brolin's autograph. He misspelled my name. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Stacy. First Merchants National Bank. Mr. Barbara Streisand. This is cool. Thank you for this. This is quirky. Love this stuff. And uh, and personal photographs and, and everything. That's <laughs> of the of the royal family. An autograph of Don Ho. In the fabulous dome showroom. Vegas memories for you. Thank you so much, Stacy. You're very, very kind and generous. Very, very kind and generous. I think I'm gonna need a blade blade for this one. Because it does it looks a bit. Did it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's Dolly's cake, Dolly's buttermilk. Look at that buttermilk biscuits and sweet cornbread. And we were just eating some crappy cornbread today, too. I accidentally bought cornbread, mix it with diet, <laughs> which, which didn't go over well. Wow, buttermilk, Dolly's biscuits. Is there a note in here? I know who this is, actually. I know who it is. It's Elisa Jordan. <laughs> Elisa Jordan, LA Woman Tours. And she knows that I love Dolly because she loves Dolly. And thank you, Elisa Jordan. <laughs> we will pork out on Dolly. And, uh, we love her biscuits. Yeah, Dolly's got great biscuits. Mm. Shredded cheddar cheese, jalapeno seeded, cup milk, eggs, butter. That's right. And Duncan Hines sweet cornbread. Thank you very much, Elisa. Cheddar chai biscuits? That's very you. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm very plain. Very neat. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you very much. This comes from our fairy godmother, Ann Meyer who is always, always sending stuff. Always sending stuff and always showing her love and support and, uh, and a giggle. <laughs> this looks delicate. It looks vintage. It looks... <laughs> Oh, let's see. Family Affair cast member came to bad, sad, morbid end. Here, two future hardcore junkies as paper dolls. I hope you agree their tragedies deserve a place in the dearly departed museum. These kids will work like country mules and they never saw a dime of it. Sick, sick, sick. You're not kidding either. Buffy and Jody paper dolls. <laughs> These are great. Look at that. And Mrs. Beasley. She's scary, yeah. Oh, look. My name is Anissa. Oh my God, look at it. Oh, you know we got to take these to her house. 
That would be really cool. Put clothes in this handy dandy carry pocket. <laughs> Put some clothes on. Ooh, look, that's a little Wednesday-esque. Hey, these are cool paper dolls. I don't think I've ever talked about the story about Johnny Whitaker coming to the shop because he had to take a dump <laughs> in our shop. He's like, you know, always pretending like he wanted to come there. He was a, he's a Lyft driver and, uh, and he came into the shop to take a, take a dump. And, uh, then he said he was, he represented Dana Plato and I took him to lunch actually. And he was going to bring Dana Plato, uh, or talk about Dana Plato because she had already died at the shop. And we we're going to talk about the terror, you know, the terrible drug, you know, deaths and terrible, you know, abuse issues. And after I took him to lunch, I never heard from him again. So there you are, Buffy and Jody with scissors. These are in great shape too. Yeah. They're not cut up. Like brand new. Yeah, they are. Very neat. Thank you, Ann Meyer. Thank you, Ann Meyer. This is from Lance again. This came in uh, today, actually. This was a surprise because he had already sent something very nice. So I'm um, curious to see uh, what this is. Lance single-handedly entertains us for hours on end. It's always the entertaining letters too. I am going, wow, look at that. Be home. For Herman, see the other side. I would think that Fred Gwynn would have loved, would have had shifts over us. He hated speaking about his iconic beyond words Herman Munster character later in life. Lo and behold, in the 90s, I presume riding a wave of my cousin Vinny's success, he was a guest on the Howard Stern show. Howard was warned, please do not ask about Herman Munster or make any mention of the Munsters. Of course, Howard went there. The next day, Howard told his listeners, after I mentioned the Munsters, Fred started lecturing me on how we were not supposed to bring this up, and he was going on and on about it. Howard felt, he says, I felt just like Eddie Munster on the show, and I did something wrong, and Herman was lecturing me. I thought it was great. Pity Howard to not have Jan Brady or Tina Louise on the show. <laughs> Snickers. Oh yeah, Universal had the rights, Fred Gwynn. So I suppose there's nothing he could do. This is cool. Wear to a swanky event with dark green turtleneck. If I had a dark green turtleneck, I would. That's very cool. That is really a pendant, isn't it? I thought it was like they would go on the bottles, but this is like really a pendant. Vintage Smell Museum, Avon Soaps, 1969 to 1970. Troy, this is right up your alley. Anytime we have something vintage around, open it goes and into my nose. Oh, smell it, smell it. Can you smell it? Oh yeah. Total, oh my God, oh my God yeah, we gotta be careful with this. Oh my God, yeah, totally Avon Smell. It's like their cologne, they just had it in buckets and they just filled like different decanters with their colognes. They all smelled the same. It's Avon Inc. I don't mean I-N-K, I mean incorporated. Uh, let's see. This goes with the Club Kids. Oh yeah, the Club Kids thing you sent me. The murder invitation. You may want to show it off to your audience. It was never limelight in New York. Look at that. That's that's New York, Chicago. See, people, somebody told me that Limelight wasn't in Chicago. It was too. That's where I danced with Divine. But yeah, these this old. Uh, I know that the one in New York was a uh, church that they deholified, whatever you call it. Chicago, I, I don't think it was a church, but it was uh, certainly similar. Very cool. Thank you, Lance. Circa 69. I was joking. Oh my god. <laughs> it looks like Prowl. I'm going to smell it. Wait, is there. I don't see a pearl in there. <laughs> Moving up to the top. Yeah, it has a unique smell. It doesn't smell like soap, it smells like Prowl. 
lay bottle face down and out. Look at that. That's the Prell stand. I wonder if they ever had Prell at JC Brink's salon. Very cool. <laughs> Lance, you've outdone yourself once more. And lastly, coming up is this. Now, I know this is actually a purchase and I know what it is and I'm gonna show it to you. And I was trying to think of how I can open this thing up. So I think what I'm gonna do is take it outside. So before I open this, if you were to, if you're interested in sending me something, Troy and I something to open, here's my address. Uh, Scott Michaels, 1770 East Vista Chino, A7, this is important, A7-619 Palm Springs, 92262. Uh, that is my mailing address. So let's figure out quite how to open this thing, but I think I figured out a way. Yeah. <laughs> I've hurt myself doing this too. <laughs> Probably made it worse. Oh, there we go. So this is a poster that I bought and it's to celebrate a buddy of mine who wrote a book. His name is Ed Canfield. He wrote a book about Criswell. And the cover art for this book has been made into a poster. I've been looking for a black light poster. Um, and this one came up and I thought, well, this would be good. I still want a vintage one, but look at the artwork on this poster. Look at that. Criswell predicts. Yes, it is. I can't wait to put this in black light. There's Tor and Vampira and Ed Wood and what that is. Very cool. It is very cool indeed. So this is awesome. I, I look forward to reading Ed's book one day. And uh, so uh, Mitch O'Connell, great artwork and thank you. Thank you guys. Look at all this cool stuff. I mean, I appreciate it so much. Robert and Patrick and Dan and Diane and Elisa, Lance, Shirley. <laughs> I read to write these things down because you guys are so kind. Tony and Susie and Walter and Ann Meyer. Uh, I love this stuff. Dolly Parton, Peter Max, Buffy and Jody, Harry Carey and and just James Dean. I mean, this is like my favorite day. It's like Christmas. So thank you guys very, very much for everything that, uh, for all the support. I, I love it. And uh, until next time, keep those cards and letters coming. You heard me.